gentlemen, oh, we were welcome starting. to <laughs> What the Fuck Fights, <laughs> brought to you by oh. Salty Mermaid Entertainment. I didn't realize we were actually starting. I know, and there's I a know, camera I, now, and I'm trying not to notice him like... What's funny is, is <laughs> they're watching you. I'm going to find a way to edit in <clears throat> him jumping. Just, yes. I think it's a great way to start the video. Yeah, yeah. so uh, yeah. welcome to the show. I'm Jen Scott Pickett. I'm sitting here with... Chase Salt Pickett. And Anonymous Adam. Mm. All right. <laughs> okay. Um, so what the fuck is what the fuck bites? Oh it God. is a friendly competition to see which one of us can come up with the craziest stuff from the Internet. We're Each not friends. week we have a new theme and Anonymous Adam is both our referee no and our judge. In regular life, Chase is my partner. On this show, he is my... Dominus. No. Um, oh, sorry. No. Nope. Dark. <laughs> so dark. Uh, anyway. <laughs> Great. Yay, it's my turn now. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the weigh in. Yes. This week's theme is coolest shit in space, yes. which I'm very excited about because space is my friend. Uh, we go out on the weekends and have space drinks. <laughs> I love space, personal space. Get, I don't get much of it. I get no away from idea my space. <laughs> that Adam was so into space. Love mm-hmm. space. So we were like, oh, we're doing space. And then he started like fucking space educating me. I know. So. I was like, you're going to be tough to like wow over yeah. today. We, no, I, I'm fascinated by all this we, stuff. So, Man, we should have switched and let one up. Yeah, I didn't think about oh, yeah. that. Oh, yeah. Through. I should have done some uh, space stuff. Well, it, it was kind of, I don't know. Sorry, Adam. Fucking It'll be fine. <laughs> we'll do space part two yes. <laughs> featuring Adam. All right. And it would be just me. Yes. <laughs> yes. With plenty of space. I'll switch seats every time I have to talk. It'd be you alone on the show just giving facts about space with a a pipe. No. And a cat. Okay. And a fireplace. (laughs) And the cat has a pipe, too. Jennifer, what do you got for space? (laughs) All right. All right. So today I'm going to talk about um, the Bermuda Triangle of space. Oh, of space. Like it's not one giant Bermuda Triangle. Well, like the the strange things that happen in one area repeatedly. Interesting. Uh. Yep. And we're going to talk about a planet that's made of diamonds. Ooh. Mm-hmm. 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 Um, we're going to talk about a different planet that rains shards of glass. Okay. Oh, that's fine. Less fun. And fine. my personal favorite, we're going to talk about giant space clouds made of alcohol. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> that's pretty amazing. I don't yeah. know. Was that a dream you had? <laughs> yeah. I was, <laughs> you know what? Did you make be. this up? <laughs> let me let me yes. check my notes. <laughs> so in my world, gin world, <laughs> we have alcohols that rain wine. Right. When I was a kid, it was cotton candy, but now they're alcohol. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty interesting. Yeah. It just tastes like cotton candy. Um, mm. Okay, there you go, Chase. <laughs> that's ghost fucking alcohol space cloud. That's interesting. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'll say I'll say this before I go into my shit. Mm-hmm. I forgot how much I forgot about our solar system. Dude, <laughs> I was like. I'm embarrassed. I'm upset by how much I didn't know. I'm, I'm like, so is this a trick? Bad. Why would no one teach me this? I, that's what I thought. I was yeah. like, I learned more than the planets, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is yeah. It, what's, what's the acronym? Nine. Wait, my very educated mother just oh, ordered. Mine was different. That's nine pizzas or something. Nine. Yeah. yeah, that's it. And I um, almost yeah. got confused and went, please excuse my... I was like, no, nope, that's, <laughs> <different. laughs> that's a different acronym. That's not the right one. But yeah, I was looking at just... A, I stumbled across facts from our solar system. And yes. I was like, I'm nothing. Yes. I, was like, I, I know yes. nothing about my there own is shit. nothing like an existential crisis that comes from thinking about outer space. Yes. Yes. Um, all right. So topics I'm going to cover today is one thing called the ghost hand of God. Oh. I know. I don't like it already. <laughs> yeah. sounds eerie. Um, Adam was bragging about some nebulas before the show. So there's <laughs> one that um, that's very specifically Just called like the zombie Pac-Man nebula. Ooh. Yeah, pretty fun. Zombie Pac-Man? Yeah. Okay. There's the Eye of Sauron. Nice. Did I say that right? Yeah. Are you talking okay. about movies now? Well, that's actually a reference from uh, Lord of the Rings. Right. So this is this this is called the Eye of Sauron, or if you want to give it its technical term, it's Fom- it's Fomalhaut. 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 Yeah. Fomalhaut. <laughs> Sounds <Okay>. German. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna shed a little light on our solar system. Those are beyond our reach, and we're gonna go to one of the moons of Saturn, Ooh. Mm. and uh, also another little dwarf planet floating around. And last but not least, we're gonna discuss Planet Nine, the ninth one. The ninth. How did Wait, they is count Pluto? them? Not Jen. Wow. <laughs> okay. Spoilers. <Yeah>. Okay. Um, <laughs> All right. <laughs> 
Wow. Okay, Adam. You know uh, what? This is embarrassing. You're not recovering from that, Jen. <laughs> I, I'm gonna I'm gonna say a little bit about Pluto. I fully was prepared to come on this podcast, mm-hmm. and I was fucking ready to vent about the fact that I'm not happy that they took Pluto away from me. Because when I was a kid, I had to yeah. memorize him as or her, excuse me, mm-hmm. as one of the cold planets, and then they stripped it away. And I've been mad ever since then mm-hmm. until I did okay. some research. And, and I'm going to be why? honest, I found my peace. Okay. Well, I found my peace. It's okay, Pluto. I'm not a planet either. Oh. Yeah. Stop it, Adam. Okay. Yes, you are. No. <laughs> Shut up. <Okay. laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen. Before I get started with the intros, I have to show you, though, we have some more incentive <laughs> to the winner. Gold, gold, Goes gold. the spoils of this... Uh, totally authentic underwater fighting championship of okay. 2021. <laughs> um, okay. So yeah, that's there's that mm-hmm. to look forward to. Anyway, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the main event. Ooh, ooh, ooh. To my right, currently lubing up his drive shaft in the grease monkey corner. Ew. Come on down to America's unknown and unranked body shop, Chase's <laughs> Chassis, <laughs> where he's giving oil changes and brake checks a whole new meaning. <laughs> I feel so dirty. <laughs> you should. <laughs> All right. It's Chase. And to my left in the fish food corner, she was born from an undersea vent and raised to speak blub. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this woman's 100% grade A chicken of the sea, and her motto is that it's wheat tuna can, not tuna can't. It's Jen. <laughs> wheat I, tuna can. I feel like I've been demoted from <laughs> oh my yes. God. fish food. You're and now, as a special Jen, uh, uh, request from me, wheat tuna can. <laughs> <laughs> Don't have a nigga that. She about will this. now do her first uh, th- uh, whatever story uh, in blub. So so please continue. Blub, you guys. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, wow. That's a compliment, blub. <laughs> no, it's if you not. Didn't know. <laughs> it means fuck y'all. All Damn right. it. <laughs> okay. I prefer, you, me prefer you to blub. <laughs> prefer your blubbing. Okay. So may I go now? Yeah. Me, you go now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> she goes blubbing again. Oh my God, shut up. <laughs> okay. So um, I don't know about you, but if you have any like cool links or pictures or anything, make sure you send them to me. This, we yeah. have a blog on saltymermaidentertainment.com. <laughs> That you can go to, and anytime we reference um, pictures or videos, we can have... Why are you doing that? Huh? You're doing that thing. I'm going to edit that out so no one knows. Okay. <laughs> no one won't see me doing that. Every time I'm talking, you're like, oh, you're about to say something? I am. And I, I am start, about like, to say something. I, 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 I want to say it before you okay. go into go. your actual thing. Go. No, no, I'll let you finish. I don't remember. Go. Okay. So, mm-hmm. this is definitely a picture blog. You definitely want to oh. see the pictures. And yeah. furthermore... Also keep in mind, I think Adam did a really good job earlier kind of explaining this, that there are pictures taking of space, which is a big black hole with some stars shedding some light, but for the most part, they're X-ray, infrared type uh, photography, okay? Mm, so that's that's what you're going to likely be seeing during the picture, okay? Yeah. They, they catch gases and debris and all this weird shit, and they sometimes, from the radiation, put off certain colors on those lenses. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. All right, cool. And sometimes they're just um, illustrations. Yeah. You know. Well, minor minor pictures. Oh, are they? Illustration is also a picture. Yeah, no, it's different. Sometimes it's reconstructed. <laughs> anyway, the point is, Sorry. when we reference I'm a terrible visual referee. I just let you fight. Mater- <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> Sometimes you're like patting Chase on the back, like, get him. That's, anyway. That's not true. <laughs> okay, I cannot wait for y'all to watch this back and be like, oh my God. You're going to be like, What did wow. I do? I can't believe I acted like that in front of millions and millions of viewers. Anyway, saltymermaidentertainment.com. There's a blog for this episode. There is a blog for each episode we do. If yeah. you want to see. Also, a lot of these I will be reading like basically directly from the link. So I like to share those links so that I'm not accused of like... You know, Fraudger- yeah, fraudulent. Fraudulent. I, I know I'm not that smart. They're like, there's no way this bitch can really say all these words. <laughs> she this bitch. stole this. I mean, we've given multiple disclaimers. I think <laughs> at this point, you kind of know where we stand and yeah. you're on board. I mean, hopefully. the motto should be take everything at a grain of salt. Salt. <laughs> Let's see what you did there. Okay. The Bermuda Triangle of Space. Right. <laughs> Sorry. I was encouraging. Go. <laughs> I was trying to make sure Adam wasn't going to pat me on the back or something weird. <laughs> 
Uh, imagine drifting off to sleep when, still with your eyes closed, you're suddenly startled by an intense flash of light. Huh. You see it? Yeah. Chase this- taking pictures of me at night. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is exactly what some astronauts have reported when passing through the South Atlantic Anomaly, a region of the Earth's magnetic field, also known as Space's Bermuda Triangle. Hmm. Scientists believe it is linked to the Van Allen radiation belts. I read this stuff and pretend like I know what that is. Yeah, yeah the Van Allen. Yeah, of yeah, course, yeah, the yeah, old yeah. Van Allen. <laughs> Um, those are two rings of charged particles trapped in our planet's magnetic grasp. Mm -hmm. So I will not read this verbatim, but basically there is an area that they say has a lot of radiation. Mm -hmm. And so they theorize that's probably what's causing all this. But basically your electronics go off um, when (laughs) certain things go through. Not in space. I know, right? You can't (laughs) communicate. And they know this because they're in that area. And then there's an international space shuttle or is it Station. Right? Station, yes. Yeah. And they are not allowed to do spacewalks in that area because so much weird shit has happened. And they're like, you know what? Too risky. <laughs> so It's fair. I'm going to start calling my walks Earth walks. Earth walks. <laughs> I don't walk. <laughs> um, I lied to you. <laughs> what? <laughs> Continue. <laughs> okay. Um, well, now I have... <laughs> <laughs> I fucking hate that we're on camera right now. Jen, look at the camera right now and just do it. (laughs) No, I can't think. Shut up. All right. um, Stop. (laughs) Yes, sir. Although this now defunct space shuttles also sometimes pass through the SAA, which is the nickname. The (laughs) SAW. The SAW. The short nature of shuttle flights made this less of a concern. Nonetheless, given the high exposure of radiation that astronauts could incur if they had direct exposure, the space walks are planned so they never take place during the transits across the SA. I wonder if they like, you know, when they're passing through, they're like, yeah, throw it out of the shuttle, see what happens. <laughs> you know, they're like, you know, right, they're like, okay, we shouldn't do space walks. <laughs> you know, yeah. Jerry's there before they get there, and then after they come out, Jerry's gone. Yeah. You know what? <laughs> well, you know how cruel like people are with experiments, so they're like. Toss that space mouse <laughs> out there. It's always a mouse, right? It's got a tiny... Or a dog or a monkey. It's always yeah. some... Right. I guess I there know. were monkeys in space. Yeah. They're so like, I think... But Phil did the walk. What's stuck out to me... Stuck out to me with that is the idea... Like, I... This is stupid. I'm embarrassed. But I, okay. I guess... It's not that I didn't know. I guess I forgot. I didn't really think about it. That space is all silent. Hmm. So yes. you're there and you can't hear anything. So the yeah. idea of, like, being in this whatever craft, this spacecraft... And all your electronics goes out, and you can't hear. And I'm like, does that mean the lights go out? Does that mean that they just can't communicate? Just like floating through space, and then like everything just like turns off. You can still hear in the space shuttle. Maybe. Yeah, because it's, it's still it's eerie. Compressed, right? Is yeah. that right? Yeah. I don't know. There's still I'm air. Not smart enough to know. Right. Things. There's air in the shuttle. And there's walls, the things that bounce off of for the sound waves. Oh, and look whatnot. at me, I'm Adam. I'm gonna like. <laughs> Remember when she everything? said she was embarrassed? <laughs> there it is. Can I get extra <laughs> points for my my NASA hoodie? You can. You yeah, can. but you're only getting the point back that you just lost. Yes. Okay, that's even. So you're just cool. right where you started, basically. I'm okay with that. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> yes. Continue. I will, goat head. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's why we don't allow drinks on the show. Uh, Jen. I'm a rebel, which is why I have two. Yeah. Rebel. It's true. All right. So first off, um, to continue my spill from earlier, I would, before I go into my subject, I'd like to throw out some interesting facts about our own solar system that I forgot about. Hmm. For example, you know that we have how many planets? At least seven. (laughs) At least, yes. But there's Technically the truth. Why? What's the other? Wait, what? (laughs) We do have at least seven. That's not Yes, there are at least seven, but there is an eighth one. <laughs> the cat fuck you. I was like, what do you know about the show that I don't? What is happening in space? <laughs> Who are they taking from us? Um, no, I mean, like, you just really think about the planets. That's me. I'm like, we got planets. They're big planets, right? Mm-hmm. But um, we <laughs> still big. <laughs> There's over 200 moons in our solar system. That's a lot of moons. That's a lot of fucking moons. Oh. I know that we have a moon, and I knew some of the bigger planets were like mooning the fuck out. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's 200 moons in our solar in system. Our solar system. Well, where are all they? All except Mercury and Venus. Mm. All the rest of the planets are fucking stunning out with all these moons. It's a lot of moons. And we only have one. I know. And yeah. we have one of those moons. And this is where it gets interesting to me. This is my piece before I go into my spiel for the show. Mm -hmm. I've been upset about about Pluto for a long time Mm -hmm. because I was made to memorize that he was part of the solar system. He Mm -hmm. or she, excuse me. Mm -hmm. And they took took Pluto away and they categorized 
um, Pluto as a dwarf planet. Hmm. The, there are five dwarf planets in our solar system. So when you think about Pluto floating around in space, just know there's four other friends mm-hmm. like Did him know that. floating around in our solar system. Yeah, This is where I made my peace with Pluto today while being on the internet. <laughs> they had a diagram up and they showed our moon. Pluto is smaller Tiny. than our moon. Yeah, oh, I actually didn't know that. I, That's really sad. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Now, Pluto is the biggest dwarf planet. So if that gives you any indication how small the other planets are, mm. literally like a diagram. It's like, wah, wah, wah. like, yeah. like yeah, yeah, the yeah. last one is like, wah. like yeah, <laughs> like it probably just made the. I, I think they even said the last one is like dwarf planet, but also asteroid. That's what I'm saying. It's yeah. like so. Is it qualifies a planet just because it is in? Orbit? It's got to be based on size and yeah. And probably well, if it's the moon, capacity to orbit, orbit, excuse me, something. Yeah. Well, right? what I'm saying is a planet, I know there are like rogue planets and exoplanets and all that, but a planet is something that revolves around a star and a moon is something that revolves around a planet. Is that the difference? Honestly, much, that yeah. sounds pretty great to me. Yeah. I mean, in I'm no nasa but if I were, I would say, yep, that's <laughs> right. All right, cool. I'm not it sounds like you're, you're opposed to NASA. <laughs> I'm, not, <laughs> yeah. I'm not a pro nasa <laughs> <laughs> It still sounds, still sounds I'm against it, doesn't it? I'm yeah. not a pro nasa You're not helping your ah! Ah! I love NASA! <laughs> okay. All right, so. I love NASA more. <laughs> okay, you got the shirt on, but I knew more about our solar system than you just now. <laughs> did you? You said I did. You've only said two things, and I knew one of them. That was more than you knew. No, yeah. I knew one of the things you didn't know. Which one? Like the difference in a planet and a moon. You guessed. I gave you but credibility. So far, I'm right. <laughs> I'm taking credibility from you. It's not right. <laughs> Carry on. I saw it. I saw the credibility <laughs> move. <I> saw, <laughs> all right. So um, my first topic, I'm going to go with the ghost hand of God because it's mm. really cool. So this is- Wait a, a minute. The facts weren't your first topic because I only did one little blur. No, there's, I was just giving fun facts about the solar system. Well, that's bonus uh-huh. material. I no, didn't no, get no, a chance not, to- I just wanted to share that with the listening audience that okay. how much little, how little I knew about our solar system. Okay. All right. That and, doesn't count towards your score so far. I'm okay with that. But if you like think about it, that's okay too. Whatever. Yeah, sure. That's All right. Fine. I'll throw some extra stuff next No, time. I was just trying to share fun shit about our solar system. All right, here we go. Go Santa God. All right. So because Oh my god, I see one. <laughs> No, that's the ghost hand of a peasant. <laughs> <laughs> There's a difference. Okay. <laughs> How many times have you been called peasant today? It's his thing. I don't know. <laughs> All right. So um, the hand, literally, it looks like an x-ray from like a doctor's office. And it's kind of crazy. Um, but it's actually a cloud of material that was ejected from a star that exploded. Mm-hmm. So NASA so has a giant fuck you. <laughs> basically, please, please tell me that hand is a bird. It's God, and he's trying to put. He's like, stop investigating. <laughs> I'm having to make more shit. I'm supposed to be retired. <laughs> um, so we have this giant uh, telescope. It's called Nuclear uh, Spectroscopic Telescope Array. It's also called New Star for short. Oh. New Star, pretty cool. Mm. Um, I think that's one of the bigger telescopes we have. They're working on one right now. That is supposed to be operable <gasps> in 2023 in Chile. Oh, shit. Um, and that one is going to be able to go much, much further than we have been able to go as of now, okay. which will come into my later topic. So the nickname Hand of God, this object, um, is called a pulsar, wind nebula, and it's powered by leftover dense core of a star that blew up in a supernova explosion. <laughs> Sounds like some band lyrics or something. Yeah, basically. Now, one of the big mysteries of the object is whether the pulsar particles are interacting with the material in a specific way that makes it look like a hand, mm. or if this fucking thing, in fact, is just shaped like a hand. So it's kind mm. of like, could be like clouds that take shapes. Yeah, you know, I mean, because we look up in the sky. in that hand Yes, shape. that's the thing. Yeah. I will say this, that when it's um, further out... Whenever they, I guess, use a telescope and take pictures that's further away, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it looks more like a hand. Now, when they get closer and the closest image they have, it starts turning more into a fist. So to your credit, they might just bring up a finger. (laughs) Yeah. So, you know, let's get to the the meat You're saying that far away, it looks like an open hand. Check this. And closer. Check check this Jones out. Yeah. I'm going to put the the picture up on the screen. Like, it's kind of ridiculous how much of a hand that is. it's pretty crazy. Ooh. So just think, like, like listening audience. It's very... It it's, looks like this ghost hand. very 3D. Hand that makes sense. Like, from like a doctor's office. And it looks like it's reaching up to grab this red galaxy, sort of. Yeah. It's very, very interesting. It's probably some like um, sculpture or art piece that aliens did. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> just, like, just trying to be creative. <laughs> right. <laughs> Fuck you, dad. <laughs> I guess aliens have also problems with their dads and their yeah. career choices. Yeah. Probably. But, she's trying to make a statement about their social norm. Yeah, I guess so. But it, anyways, like that's... Uh, that's my little hand of God. Do you have a picture of it like as a closed fist? I, I did, but honestly, I was like, eh, I'm, it just, and I like the hand better. Oh, Let me he, see. Likes, he likes the hand better. I like okay. the hand better. Oh, Based okay. on my introduction, I think you know where I'm going <laughs> okay. with this. I mean, this is another one, but it's just like a shittier photo of the other one. Yeah, it still looks know, like it's like. I think that looks cool. Yeah, it still, it still looks, looks like a hand though. Yeah. 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 And again, I mean, obviously because we can, our technology of understanding mm-hmm. lots of things in space. Yeah. It's only so far. Space. <laughs> that, you know, we're like, well, maybe it's a hand. Maybe it's not. <laughs> I don't know, but it's cool as shit. It's the, one of the eternals. check it out on the blog. If you're watching the video, um, I'll put that up on the screen for you guys. Probably already have. Look, I did it. Thank you. Yeah. What? Uh, <laughs> yeah. What? Uh, okay. So <laughs> on that note, that's a good segue to this. I didn't mention this in the way in, but there is another thing that is a nebula, but it's called a witch head. Mm. Oh. And I know that you've heard of. Yeah, this yeah, yeah. This is yeah. actually really cool, though. I actually was. It's very cool, but I was disappointed because whenever you <laughs> look up this. Thing, it mm-hmm. says a witch appears to be cackling out in space, and I'm stupid. So I was expecting <laughs> <pictured> sound. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> There's this echo. And if you laugh. listen close, like <laughs> <laughs> exactly, and I was like, "What the fuck?" Are Unexplained chances? witch noises coming from but the witch nebula. It, they just mean her mouth is open. So <laughs> yeah. that's why it says appears to be cackling. <laughs> <laughs> like to point that out for you. <laughs> Uh, shut up. <laughs> um, a witch appears to be cackling out into space in this eerie image from NASA's Wide Field Infrared Survey. The Infra- Survey Explorer, yeah. The infrared, infrared Portrait shows mm-hmm. the Witch Head Nebula, named after its resemblance to the profile of a wicked witch. And hmm. I think, unless I'm incorrect here, because fuck what I know about space. Every time you see a picture, it's either green or bluish, which makes it seem more oh, we just had one with oh, red. Yeah. eerie. So I don't think that they're like coloring it that way on purpose. I think yeah, I was wondering that too when I saw the picture, but I don't think they are. I, I, found th- some, I think it's very just ironic that it looks the way it does and it's also yeah, green. Yeah, so I'll show you this. There's one that's very, very green, but I did find a few that were like more of a bluish purple. Oh, shit, yeah. Yeah. That's, but, some, that's a cackling witch, buddy. Wizard of Oz shit. Kinda, yes, kinda it looks like a half much moon, like wiz- too. That's what I was mm-hmm. thinking, too. It very much, so for anyway, not anyone not watching on the video, um, if you go to the blog, you can see it. But if you're just listening, it literally looks like a crescent moon mm-hmm. with a giant witch, maybe kind of like a warty nose and like a wart on the chin. Yeah, Warty-nose. with her mouth wide open. With her mouth wide open because she's cackling, but not really. Is she cackling? What is she doing in deep space? What is she doing? You can't so, hear anything in space. Uh, da, 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 da. You can still laugh in space. No, you can't. Okay. You just look like this. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> look like you're having a stroke, right? Yeah, that's what you look like. <laughs> um, so, shut up. Um, so, that was a quick little fun story. Central. But speaking of sound, this is a real thing. Okay. Of all the things leaving astronomers scratching their heads, fast radio bursts, also known as FRBs, mm-hmm. are particularly vexing. As Horrible. their name suggests, they are sudden, rapid chirps of radio waves, often la- lasting mere milliseconds. The first one was picked up by our radio s- telescopes in 2007, which is not that long ago. No. no. 2007? Like, geez. And we've been scrambling to try and explain them ever since. These FRBs, as we at NASA call Crib. them, <laughs> appear to be coming from outside the Milky Way, often hundreds of millions of light years away. To be seen from such a distance, they must release as much energy in a fraction of a second as the sun does in 80 years. Oh my fucking God. Yikes. So what That's the fuck insane. is going on that it's that powerful? Yeah. Yeah. Who Explanations range from colliding black holes to signals from extraterrestrial Man, civilizations, which is my favorite because I love aliens. I don't know. I was more interested in watching two black holes battle it out. Okay, no. Ooh. I guess one has to swallow you can see the that other, on the right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's an OnlyFans you know, account. <laughs> but honestly, there's a thing called um, galactic cannibalism where the galaxies yeah. eat each other, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the Milky Way and Andromeda are yes, going to hit each other at some point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Who's going to gobble who? Right. Before astronomers had managed to figure the the ones out in 2007, the universe threw us another curveball, a burst known as FRB, bunch of numbers, emanating from a small galaxy three billion light years away was seen to repeat, Ooh. which sounds like a message. 
on <laughs> just one day in August 2017. Again, what is what, four years ago? Yeah. Why are we not talking about this? I've never heard this. Yeah. It repeated a staggering 93 times. Damn. Ruling out a single event as its cause. Whatever triggered the burst had to be ongoing. So maybe FRBs are caused by rapidly rotating neutron stars or material continuously falling into the black holes. Of course, they could be a red herring. There could be two separate causes of repeating and non-repeating. Blah, 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 blah. I don't like when they like, well, it could be this. Like, Fuck you guys. Stay cool. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> Say cool things. It's aliens. <laughs> so um, ultimately, we hope that cataclysmic processes, studying their properties should help us to pin down their home galaxies and the processes that are causing them. Hmm. But again, I would like to believe that's aliens with superpower, like super I mean, 93 talkies, times like in one day. Not a coincidence. And the amount of energy for us to hear a chirp. Yeah. I mean, Jesus. imagine what their technology is like. That's what if I'm they're saying. able to like get that to us. Yeah. You know, we can barely let a fart out in space. I, know. I mean, <laughs> that's there's interesting, something interesting about that, honestly, because like we've been sending signals out to space for years and right, years right. and right. years and years. And if you look at like how long and how big like the galaxy actually is, like we've only technically been broadcasting for a couple milliseconds. Even though we've been oh doing it for God. years, I'm getting that feeling I get when you go into a science museum and at first you see like the the planets, the huge display, and yeah. it's just it's blacked out and there's stars, and you're like, "This is so cool!" And then you're like, "I am insignificant. Yeah. <laughs> I am nothing. I am a plane. I'm a tiny loser. <laughs> a tiny I'm, rock." I'm getting that feeling. <laughs> tiny, tiny peasant. <sighs> All right. So speaking of tiny peasants, right? <laughs> you know what? No, it's not a great segue. <laughs> Fumble hot. All right. Okay. <laughs> Brought to you by Milton Bradley. Um, <laughs> I have Sauron. All right. Mm. So this is a star that's actually in the southern hemisphere. It's one of our brighter stars in the sky. You wouldn't know what it is because you're not astronomers, mm. but it's out there. You can, I think, from my understanding, you can actually see it. Um, you know, from Earth. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, um, so this is like its own like little. Like with the naked eye. I think so. It says it's one of our brightest stars in yeah, the sky. So I, I think we could probably see it. Yeah. I think it would just take some training of your naked eye mm. to find out where it is. And I could be mistaken. I mean, I don't know. Anyways, nonetheless. Um, so this is its own little galaxy of itself. And there's only, from what they have found so far, this little area has one planet. They called it, because they're so creative, Fommel Hot B. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I noticed that a lot. There's yeah. a lot of like They're planet like, 73828. There are a lot of planets. Okay. You can't yeah. name them all Steve, Jeffrey. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Why not? So uh, it's got its little zombie planet that floats around it. It's it, it rotates around its star in a very unusual way. And the planet looks like a fucking potato. So <laughs> no cool points for it. I love potatoes. Um, yeah, I know. <laughs> um, <laughs> potatoes make vodka. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it does, ladies and gentlemen, doesn't. this is just one of the few segues into Jennifer's <laughs> alcohol. <laughs> There's just water in this cup. So outside of the the people um, and NASA, like just astounded by the weird little pattern that orbits around the star, um, they also have a they have a, they wonder why for whatever reason that this specific star has a tremendous amount of comets. That actually circle around it in its little that's not atmosphere is not correct, but space region. It's got this giant dust disk that surrounds it. Dusk so think disk. of like a dust. ring on Saturn. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So there's a just this giant dirty disk <laughs> <laughs> that that literally goes giant all the deep. that circles all the way okay. through this little galaxy, all the way around, and one dumb planet does like <laughs> <laughs> circling around it. All right. What's interesting, though, is that the disk, much like a ring on like Saturn, mm-hmm. it it uh, it's got space between it and the actual star mm-hmm. of, of Amalhat. So when they're taking pictures of it, it looks eerily like the eye of Sauron. Oh, it really does. Yeah. So if you're looking at the photo, it literally is a giant blank space in the yeah. middle. And then immediately outside of that, it has all of the rock and the comets and the dust and all the bullshit Mm -hmm. that surrounds outside of it. So when we take pictures of it, it just looks like a giant eye. Oh, yeah. That's even more similar to it. And you can see like this one right here. You can actually see the star in the middle of it. Yeah. 
But yeah, it's got Wait, this. Wait, okay. So the very, very, I see. That's the sun. Yeah. And there's only one planet, you said? Yeah, one little zombie planet. That, that's making the big ring? Um, No, because that actually looks like a pretty decent ring. That's not like ring. <laughs> it's not like a pretty decent ring. No, it's radiation. There's just a strong amounts of radiation that oh are tied God. to the center of the disk, or that's what they speculate because of all the debris. But because of all the debris that surrounds it and the star, for whatever reason, has none of this dusty disc-like material floating near it that's it weird. creates this giant void around it yeah and then you got deuter head <laughs> just going around and then you got all this <laughs> dust space debris comet rocks probably diamonds glass and fucking astronauts who knows <laughs> floating around <laughs> yep. and, yeah. Random monkey. i sent them a message 93 times <laughs> no one will come get me um, yep. <laughs> so yeah, it's just it's just interesting. Once again, this is just one of those things of we're taking pictures of shit in space, and yeah. every time they take a picture, they're like, "That's really cool because it looks like the Eye of Sauron, which is on Lord of the Rings, and it legitimately looks like a giant fiery eye, which yeah. is yeah. really cool." Yeah. Um. So go to the blog and check that Do out, and that'll be on the screen. No, when this was discovered, was it after the movies? Um, what I'm saying is, like, is it possible? That's a good question. Is it um, possible that this at all inspired? The movie, or is it if it's named that? I, I don't know. I didn't read anything yeah. because it kept. It obviously gave its reference to Lord of the Rings, but they didn't mention of anything of yeah. any inspiration derived from it. So I don't. It's pretty know. freaky because it looks so much like it. Adam's making a face. Why are you making a face? <laughs> yeah, just continue. <laughs> He's <Okay>. farting. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Cramps. <laughs> All, right. All right, we're going to talk about water in space. First, we're going to start with one giant water park. This oh. is a planet with a very cool name. It is GJ12. No. I thought you were <laughs> going to be like, the planet's the- name is Water Park. <laughs> <laughs> they basically call it the Water Park because right. if a land planet is such a bore for you, perhaps a vacation on GJ1214B. No. Honestly, that sounds terrifying. Maybe <laughs> what you are looking for in the very distant future. No. This exoplanet, which for anyone who doesn't know, is a planet that is not in our solar system. Exo. Exo. Excommunicated. This planet has no land masses Get out on it water planet. whatsoever. We're talking about water world and actual, like there is no land. Yeah. Being completely covered in oceans. The exoplanet has been described as a bigger and hotter version of Jupiter's Galilean moon Europa. Oh, Ooh. it's even hotter? Was it boiling all the time? Hotter version. <laughs> I know boiling oh water, God. like boiling water, because there's it's, no land. It's one steamy planet. Ugh. And so on a similar note, astronomers found the largest, well, so far, most distant reservoir of water. And it's not really on a planet. It's just water in space. And just floating around? Yeah. Floating water? Interesting. Unless I'm misunderstanding, it has something to do with being near a uh, um, black hole or whatever. So okay. it's like two teams of astronomers have discovered the largest and farthest reservoir of water ever detected in the universe. The water, which is equivalent to 140 trillion times all the water in the world's oceans, oh my God. surrounds a huge feeding black hole called a quasar. Does that sound right? A quasar. 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 Yeah. More than 12 billion light years away. The environment around this is very unique that is producing this huge mass of water. It's another demonstration that water is pervasive through the universe, even in the very earliest times. So it's like there's a whole link that I'll like, it goes right Just think really of like Harry depth. Potter when they put Voldemort in the big orb of water. Just me? Okay. I don't, what I would not remember. I have this. never finished those movies. <gasps> really? I'm oh. surprised. Or read I the have, books. But I'm not. That's when Voldemort finally showed his face after uh, killing the kid, and they were they were in the halls at the. Uh, oh yes, yes. And they yes. were fighting, mm-hmm. and he like orbed him up in a giant, just floating ball of water. Which sounds fun in theory, but anyway. So who is this? <laughs> oh my god. Dumbledore. Ah. <laughs> listen, listen. So this is what I was saying earlier, in that it's a, a concept that's been illustrated, not like somebody like took an actual picture of this, but it's very cool looking because it's, I guess what I'm gathering is that in the center is the black hole and then all around it is this huge That's amount one thirsty of floating hole. water. Oh yeah. my gosh. Isn't that cool looking? Yeah. yeah. Shit's awesome. That's interesting. Yeah. So if you're listening, what keeps, I, go I to guess Salty Mermaid The gravitational pull of the, of the hole keeps it from floating away? Um, on the caption. What keeps it from moving? That's what I assume that the pool has to. I yeah. don't know. So... 
this artist concept illustrates a feeding black hole, which I don't know what that means exactly. I mean, black holes literally they pull in eat, literally yes. anything that gets <sighs> too Look, close. Think of Kirby. So yeah, basically, yeah. I don't fully understand it because I'm like, at some point, wouldn't it just suck everything in, or is that what's happening slowly? No, because you have to reach the point of no return, which is the event horizon. So once it's not sucking things in, it just has such a gravitational pull that mm-hmm. it reaches certain. You know, lengths, you and then once you enough. enter it, then once you hit that, so when it eats, it's not like it's getting bigger. N- not necessarily. Mm-hmm. I mean, I guess it could if it ate another like black hole or something mm-hmm. or anything. But yeah, know. okay. Battle well, of the black hole. Astronomers discovered huge amounts of water vapor, gas, and dust, likely from a torus around the form a torus around the central black hole with clouds of charged gas above and below. X-rays emerge from the very central reason while thermal infrared radiation is emitted by dust. I don't know half the shit that this means. It's just a cool picture and it's crazy to me that there's just this huge, significant, basically body of water floating in space. So I don't, I I wonder, I guess, what's the difference in that and like a planet that's nothing but water? Why is it in a globe shape or whatever like why is this kind of spread out water and why is this it's all fucking crazy to me weird fun fact about black holes when you get too close and you start to get sucked inside of them you get stretched out because if say your feet enter the event horizon they begin to stretch way faster than what's up here starts to stretch Mm. so it's literally something scientists have coined Spaghettification. Spaghettification. <laughs> it's a real scientific term. I wonder if that hurts. I'm going to start threatening my kids. If you don't go clean your room, you will be spaghettificationist. Or I'm going to send you to the water world. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And there's two choices. There's the cool one, and then there's the, yeah. I mean, I don't black know. hole I one. I don't know if the black hole one's cool either. Mm. I mean, it's, yeah. it's cool, but it's like, that's still scary. Well, one is boiling Terrific. water, and one is just, yeah, I don't, and why doesn't it get sucked in? What do you mean? Why doesn't, why doesn't the, the water, water get sucked into, into the, the hole? black hole? I don't know. I like space, but I don't. I don't know everything about space. I will say this: when we were researching, I found a lot of cool shit, and I was like, I would like to know more about this. And then I started having like panic attacks, and I was like, <laughs> yeah, or, yeah. or like I either don't comprehend this because my brain is going to explode, and so I'm going to give you like very tip of the gist, well, or yeah. I'm like, I can't oh. handle how insignificant I am. So <laughs> it's a lot stop. of shit that we don't know, but we're definitely not NASAist. No. Nope. No. <laughs> All right, so I feel like I've made a lot of like pop culture references today. Maybe I'm going to make another one. Okay. Great. So these are for my, you know, this show for me is for is for my nerd. You want to nerd out with some shit? Is this like Big Bang? Yeah, theory? I guess. So. I mean, I've like mentioned a lot of stuff. I've mentioned Lord of the Rings. I think I, yeah, I mentioned Kirby. <clears throat> I mentioned uh, Harry Potter. Harry Potter. Mm-hmm. And now I'm mm-hmm. going to mention something else. So this is. <sighs> I don't you know. Also what, I don't know why you're making that face. Somebody. Did. I'm excited. Well, okay. <laughs> Do it. All right. So. Um, we're going to talk about one of Saturn's moons, um, Mimas. And Mimas. <laughs> no, just Mimas. Mimas? M-I-M-A-S. Mimas. Mimas. Okay. Right? We have a nephew named Milo, Mimo, so Mimas. Yeah, well, Mimo. you know what? I'm going to name this new Milo so instead. If, if Jonathan and Jackie have a third child, they've got a Mia and they have a Milo. They need a Mimas. <laughs> they need a Mimas. <laughs> and this is why they need a Mimas. I'm serious. If you have I'm a third child. i if they don't have a Mimas. <laughs> if you need... <laughs> Here comes Mimas. <laughs> Middle name at best. So Saturn has, this is where a big chunk of your moons come from, by the way. Saturn has 60 fucking moons. <laughs> such yeah. a show off. Yeah, what a fucking show off. Saturn has 60 like the, moons. the Jeff Bezos. Um, <laughs> but there's... <laughs> the yeah, he's just taking all the moons. <laughs> Some, there's two planets out there with no moons. You could share. Earth has one fucking moon. Yeah. Um, so... Um, It has 60 moons, but one moon is very special in particular because this little moon, Mimas, actually um, resembles the Death Star from (laughs) uh, Star Wars. Of course it does. (laughs) So if you love Star Wars and you've ever seen the Death Star, there's a giant fucking crater that was put into the side of this poor little moon's head. (laughs) And now when they take pictures of it from Earth... It literally looks like um, Darth Vader's spacecraft. Mm. So this is Mimas. Oh my God, it does, actually. Yeah. So, <laughs> so if you know anything about anything, that looks like the fucking Death Star. It does. It's yeah. The moon. So they have a moon floating around Saturn that looks like the Death Star. That's oh freaky. God. And if that's not cool, I, I mean, mean yeah. you know, come on. That. That's some good shit. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty cool. I don't have anything else about that moon. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a moon, all right? But it looks like the Death Star, and that's cool. Yeah, it is cool. <laughs> yeah. Um, so 
I found out that in mid-2014, actually, you know what, before I tell you what it is, I want you to look at it mm. yourself and tell me what you think it is. Do, do, do. Mm. All right, this is a picture from Mars. Mm-hmm. Damn it. So I'm looking at me. You suck. <laughs> <laughs> okay, look, this is a picture. Um, Ooh, dirt. Okay, what else? Um, s- more solid dirt. In the rock, s- rock dirt. Center. What Mars. Does, what does that doesn't look like something eerie to y'all? That looks like a bone. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, that looks like an old battle axe. You're just trying to ruin this for me. <laughs> I mean, that still has implications. <laughs> I'm <laughs> saying true. caveman used to make bones of battle axes. In mid 2014, the internet got very excited about the discovery of what looked like to most normal people wow. as a thigh bone, a thigh bone, a thigh bone. <laughs> and you said bone. It looks like a bone. It does look like a bone. But NASA looks <sighs> to ring my fucking like life. somebody get this bone out of here. <laughs> <laughs> was quick to explain that the star of the photo is just a rock shaped by erosion caused by wind or water. So supposedly this means that there is no secret alien burial on the planet. But I think I call fuck you. I've it's seen obviously movies. a bone. Okay. <laughs> and they are trying to keep it from the public per usual. It's yeah. obviously a human bone, so. You're going to burn that hoodie by the end of this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the truth is they didn't give it to me, okay? I bought it. You are nasist. God. <laughs> um, I have more, but I don't know if you want to, like, take a turn. Yeah, I'll take a turn. Ooh. Uh, another thing in our solar system, I just thought it was in some interesting statistics. 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 Um, one of our dwarf planets, remember we have five, including mm-hmm. Pluto, which we're okay with now. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> there is Hamia. Um... So this little dwarf planet is just out beyond Neptune, um, and it's already unusual because it's another planet that's, sh- well, planet, dwarf planet that's shaped like a fucking potato. <laughs> so it's elongated. I love potatoes and Well, then potato you would juice. love this planet of, the, of, of their Dieter, Valdemont planet, all right? So what's interesting is, um, what's just funny to me is that um, this little dwarf planet also has its own two moons. <laughs> I know. Could you imagine this little rock in space? It's got two is. little rock friends. Yeah. I know. So, You're a family. I know. It's kind of cute, right? It's not even small, like, <laughs> compared to everything that we know. Yeah, true. <laughs> so what's interesting about it is, A, it's not a real planet. It's a dwarf planet. Mm-hmm. And this tiny little planet it has its own two little moons. <laughs> and it's shaped like a potato. Of course. And also, um, a day on this planet only lasts for four hours, mm. which makes it the fastest spinning um, large object that we have in our solar system. Oh. So out of everything in our solar system, this little piece of rock and yeah. its little moons moves the fastest. Mm-hmm. You get four-hour days. Also, what's interesting is in 2017, some astronomers were dicking around with their fucking microscope, <laughs> and they noticed... Microscope? Yeah. <laughs> and they were like, why do we have this microscope? <laughs> Someone give me the telescope stat. I did not catch that. Yeah. And they somebody has got to be the referee. They threw so. the microscope off the cliff, <laughs> and they walked up the cliff to their little solar system land, <laughs> and they got the telescope out. Okay. All right. So when they did it, they also noticed this cute little dwarf planet with its own little moons. It's the fastest little spinning thing ever. Also has a little thin ring around it. Aww. So kind of like Saturn, oh and He's even it it's Neptune. Did I uh, also has the ring? No, I don't think it's Neptune. Well, I mean, there's another planet. Jupiter. Jupiter also has rings. Jupiter no, there's Saturn. another one. I think it's Neptune. Oh, really? Uh, Maybe. It's a cold planet. It's in the back. Huh. I think it's, it's it's a really one. Is it your anus? <laughs> 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 Look, I've been waiting the whole fucking show. For, I, I really thought it was Referee, can you control this, this <laughs> It's lady? pronounced Uranus. I know. Officially. But not on the show with you guys. <laughs> well, that's fair. Anyway, so. They also discovered that it also has its own little ring. They think it was caused by a collision <laughs> that was sometime. Uranus also has a little ring. It also has a little ring right at the <laughs> little ring hole. <laughs> Y'all are stupid. Yep. <laughs> Don't take away it was bound from to my happen. little dwarf planet. This is what you feel like. I know. <laughs> But I'm okay. I'm okay. okay. I'm glad y'all are having fun. You're mm-hmm. laughing and we're all dear friends. And you stab us when the camera's not on. <laughs> okay. Okay. So on that note, oh I am going to talk about our cold planets. Ow. Wow. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. I just want attention. <laughs> so it hasn't been proven yet, but scientists theorize it rains diamonds mm. on Neptune and possibly Uranus. And they were able to simulate it. Somebody oh. told me that it rained diamonds on 
So I think I've even also heard it on Jupiter and Saturn. There was, I got to quit looking at memes. Okay. <laughs> I've seen these diamonds raining on other planets before. Mm. I think it was Saturn or Jupiter. Okay, well, I don't know about that. But okay. so from you, my diamond, research, it, it says um, Neptune and possibly Uranus. and Uranus. Your, your mom's mm, anus. Your mom's okay. anus. All right. Some models predict that the temperature around the core may be high enough that diamonds would melt, forming underground seas of liquid metallic carbon. Interesting. Maybe with some diamond icebergs. Which oh, I fucking love. That's cool as shit. Diamond icebergs. You know, we're working on this movie. Movie. Fuck. This book. It's a picture book. Mm. I don't know if we're allowed to talk about this yet. But yeah, that's fine. It's called The Frosty Mermaids. And I really like the idea of the illustrations. I want to somehow convey diamond icebergs because oh, it just cool. sounds cool as yeah. shit. Yeah. Very fairy tale esque. Um, so that's that's in our own solar system. There is another planet that is. Do you guys remember what it's called? Uranus. No. <laughs> there is a, no. There is an exoplanet. Ah. Um, and there's different types of exoplanets. So this one is considered a super Earth, whatever oh. that means. Um, and it's called, it's, I don't know why it's called this, but it's 55 Cancri E. Hmm. Um, it's at least a third of the planet's mass is pure diamond. Oh, wow. my God. Right? Wow. 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 Real diamonds. Um, they discovered <laughs> in 2012 that scientists announced they discovered an exoplanet twice the size of Earth believed to be made largely of diamond. Astronomers said the rocky planet was likely covered in graphite and diamond rather than water and granite. In the new mm-hmm. study, they carried out laboratory tests to support the research. So they basically were like... Taking the ingredients we assume, and I don't know how they figure all this shit out. I mean, they have their methods, but they were their plan was they were like trying to create something similar enough that it would like have the semblance of potential diamonds, and then they could therefore theorize that the planet was diamonds. But then they actually created the diamonds. Yeah. So they're like, what the fuck? So yeah, that was pretty cool. So you're telling us the NASA's <clears throat> tucked away creating diamonds? I know, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, That's where the funding came from. It, I did learn, because I was trying to figure out how they figure out enough to even theorize all this stuff. Like, I did learn that sometimes they find exoplanets based on the star. They basically see the shadow or whatever. Yeah, that's a lot. Right. Yeah. But they said that a new telescope equipment from the U.S. Space Agency, NASA, has helped scientists better observe and learn more about exoplanets ever before. And so far, they've confirmed the existence of more than 4,000 exoplanets. Yeah. And a huge crazy. number of those, like 40 of them, are Earth-like. Ooh. So, you They're know like Earth, uh, Earth-like, but correct me if I'm wrong, they still haven't found the planet with a recipe like ours. Isn't that right? I don't think so. They're, I think by Earth-like, they can mean what anything can, from the diameter and size to the potential. Okay. Like there was one planet. Well, it's also the happy medium from the distance from the, their star. Yeah. That can yes. sustain life. There was one planet that, um, and I'm probably butchering this to some extent, but basically they were like half the planet is too cold to live on because the way it's tilted and half of it's too hot. But there is a strip in the middle that theoretically would have the conditions that human life could be sustained on it. Right. Which is insane. Weird ring world. Type yes, thing. ring world. Yeah. <laughs> but don't go to the cold part. But if you're banished, the if you're part. banished, you go right. to the cold, you go right, to the hot. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> Choose your destiny. <laughs> and then on that, so we have a planet that at least two that they theorize can have raining diamonds and then another planet that's mostly encrusted with diamonds crusty diamonds right um and then this i'm going to end that section with because those are the cool things Mm. diamonds right Mm. but this um it says a tour with nasa's exoplanet exploration site which i'll do a link to the most terrifying and mind-blowing mind one of the most terrifying and mind-blowing destinations in our galaxy this is a super exciting name hd 17 Whoa. billion numbers B. I've never heard of that before. Is the killer you never saw coming. To the human eye, this far off planet looks bright blue, but as a space trip or confusing it with the friendly skies of Earth would be mistaken, the weather on this world is deadly. It blows winds up to 5,400 miles per hour. <laughs> okay, so nobody is living is, there. <laughs> it's, it's, it's seven times the, the wind is seven times the speed of sound. And oh it would whip a traveler in a sickening spiral around the planet. Like you would get oh in the planet God. and you would just... <laughs> it's like a for real roller coaster. <laughs> but if you survive that somehow... You won't survive. You're still fucked because it rains shards of glass. But not just any shards of glass. The shards of glass rain sideways. Well, of course, it's like a planet. giant tornado. <laughs> yeah, the so... The planet, basically. And if that's not enough... 
The cobalt blue does not come from the reflection of tropical ocean, as on Earth, but from a blowtorch atmosphere. <laughs> <laughs> so before you even make it, where you, you get cut up, blowtorch by, fire. You got to go through the blowtorch, <laughs> right, and the wind, <laughs> and the shards of glass. This is where Satan lives. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That's a hell planet. Hades. Yeah. <laughs> yes. It's amazing. I love shit like that. Yeah. That's I'm like literally sweating talking about it. So. <laughs> <laughs> Blowtorch, wind, glass planets give me the sweats. <laughs> that is so hot. <laughs> Thinking I'm going to punish my enemies. <laughs> <laughs> Which would be YouTube. I know. <laughs> I, could see, I could see you picturing us getting shard to death. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Today, do I want to spaghettify you or do I want to put you on the glass planet? It's fucked up. No, uh, you really want to upset me? Put me on the water planet and I'll cry. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. More water. I'm terrified. Just now you know his weakness. Yeah. Oh, All right. So this is going to be my last one. Okay. I'm going to read this. Um, more verbatim will provide the link. I just don't want to miss anything. Mm-hmm. And it had so much of the technical shit that I was right. like, oh, no. That's so. where get, you get these right. gems so that make sense. I was, you're right. And then you're like, wait, when? Wind. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <door>. Glass shards. <laughs> right. So I try to take out the shit that I didn't feel like anybody would get. Um, and this is the rest of it. So, Planet Nine. Mm. Astronomers, as you know, are increasingly certain that. There is a ninth planet orbiting the sun far out beyond Neptune, a so-called planet nine. Mm-hmm. So this means an undiscovered planet in our own fucking Which solar system. Which is crazy that we wouldn't have I know, seen that. Yeah. But I think that, again, just is a testament to how much, how big our own solar system is. Yeah. That we're still discovering shit that's so far out beyond our reach, even yeah, that's though. true. Yeah, so... It's pretty interesting. So um, going back to the point at nine, it wouldn't be the first time uh, the roll call of the sun's orbiting world has been tweaked. We all know, um, well, actually, I didn't know this, that Ceres, which is actually one of the dwarf planets, uh, it's the largest asteroid in our solar system. It was discovered in 1801, and it was initially classified as a planet. I didn't know that. Oh, so pre... Yeah, exactly. So way back in the fucking day, um, they took that away in 1930. They're like, nah, fuck it. It's an asteroid. (laughs) And then the same thing happened in 2006 when they're like, no, Pluto's just a little guy. It's just like a marble and got rid of it. Um, So the first clues that there is yet another uh, member of the Sun's planetary fraternity came in 2014 when the American astronomer Dr. Scott Shepard found a small dwarf planet candidate called, it's one of those fucking 20012 VP1113, orbiting an average of 250 times further from the sun than the Earth. It's a elongated orbit, which is significantly tilted relative to that of the planets immediately stood out. Um, so does that make sense? They caught a piece of something further out than our other planets yeah. that seemed to be, it was caught in an orbit, yeah. Yeah. which was like, Hmm, mm-hmm. there's only a certain amount of orbits that we know that exist. Right. Um, while a few unusually aligned objects could be dismissed as an unlikely coincidence, now a total of 10 have been discovered, largely thanks to the work of the astronomers that are obviously doing astronomy stuff. <laughs> all right, so while all these objects are sharing similar orbital properties, the chances of their alignments being a fluke drops to like 0.00001%. The leading explanation is that there is an otherwise an unseen planet hurting these objects with its own gravity. Damn. So we can see the objects, but not the planet? Uh, Yeah, I I guess so. I don't know. I'm not an astronomy guy. Do I? It's invisible? No, it's not an invisible planet. I think they're... This, I think, will give you a little bit more clarity. Um... Shepard, he was 60% sure a ninth planet existed back when he found it, this in 2012. Now he says he's 85% certain, yet for the planet to be acting in this way, it would have to be 10 times more massive than the Earth and take what? at least 10,000 years to orbit the sun oh my <laughs> and sit over 200 times further out than our planet. Damn. This enormous distance makes hunting it down and, and actually photographing Impossible. it very, very tricky. Um, so basically at this time, they've put in lots of efforts to like snapshot it mm-hmm. based on certain trajectories. Yeah. But with it, taking 10,000 years to orbit the sun and trying to follow the patterns of these other small objects floating around. It's been really hard. So 
So far, they've covered about 30% of the prime area that the planet could have been in, and they're still working to cover the other 70% that it might potentially be hiding in. Um, I did some more research just on some more update information, information on it, and as you can imagine, since I haven't found anything yet, even though there's no explanation to these other smaller objects hitting an orbit, which I think is pulled by a large object like gravity, mm-hmm. um, there's a lot of naysayers, as you can imagine. They're like, Always. no, there's not a planet, blah, 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 blah. But the people that are behind the research of this Planet 9 are still very adamant that it exists, and they're still, to this day, searching, which segues into my Chile <clears throat> telescope that is supposed to oh, come into, new, yeah. into Ooh, play in 2023, yeah. where they feel like they have the <laughs> best shot at actually um, seeing it in the future. But until then... They're going to continue wearing their NASA sweatshirts, <laughs> and they're going to continue trying to roll out um, all this coverage area that it might be hiding. Yeah. Well, the mysterious planet. 10,000 years. That's terrifying. Hmm. Which yeah. makes you wonder then, like, God, is there planets beyond that that we just can't even fucking detect? I mean, maybe. Where I mean, does it We're end? in a galaxy, you Jeez. know what I mean? Like, yeah. so mm. who knows, man? All right. Well, let's talk about the raspberry rum cloud. Yeah, of course. Of that course. sounds delicious. Yeah. <laughs> Delicioso. It's not the only thing I want to throw out here, but in case we get interrupted by our toddler trying to wake us up or something, I want to at least cover this one. So, okay. of course. <clears throat> there are giant clouds of alcohol floating in space. 10,000 light years from Earth is a in a constellation far, far away. There is a massive cloud of alcohol discovered in 1995. The cloud is 1,000 times larger than the diameter of our solar system. Damn. Bigger than our solar system. Not just Earth, bigger than our solar system by a hundred times. <clears throat> it contains enough ethyl alcohol to fill 400 trillion, trillion pints of beer. So Jesus. to down that much alcohol, every person on Earth would have to drink 300,000 pints a day for one billion years. <laughs> I can do it. Challenge accepted. Challenge accepted. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are you sure we're not doing this already? <laughs> I am trying every day, guys. I'm doing my part. <laughs> Sadly, for those of you planning on this interstellar pub crawl, the cloud is 58 quadrillion miles away. It's also a a cocktail of 32 components, some of them as nasty as carbon monoxide, Mm. hydrogen, cyanide, and Mm. ammonia. So, you know, is it worth it? I thought you said it was good. Right? Um, so raspberry. She said it was strong. She, <laughs> yes. said, she also said raspberry. Yes, it's kind of like a like a Long Island tea. There's a lot of shit. Uh, oh, okay, yeah, so, yeah, pneumonia. Um, <laughs> yeah, cyanide, whatever. Yeah. Um, similarly, similarly, near the center of the Milky Way, a cloudy bridge of methanol surrounds a stellar nursery. The bridge booge. The bridge boobs. The bridge boobs. boobs. <laughs> I'm drunk, I swear. Boobs and, yeah. and alcohol. Let's go. I just said I'm drunk, I swear. I'm not drunk. <laughs> she just actually, And if you can see, if it's not edited out, she's got two cups on the side of the cable. One table. of them is cable? potato juice. I'm okay. drunk, too. We're so all drunk. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So let's see. Um, blah, blah, blah. I'll include this link that gives you all the details, but here's where it becomes interesting. Now, if you're wondering what those space spirits may taste like, Sagittarius B <laughs> has an answer. The cloud of course, contains, it's in Sagittarius. Right. Let's go. Um, so they theorize that it reportedly smells like rum, but the the thing in it, the ester, is what gives raspberries their taste and reportedly is what makes rum smell like rum. So I don't know. So <laughs> the idea is that the center of our galaxy may taste and smell like raspberry-flavored rum. That's incredible. That's yeah. amazing. Yes. Yeah, I'd like to. If I was an astronaut and I got fucking Bermuda triangled out of my ship, <laughs> right. I'd pray to God that I, fl- I just float into that shit. Just yeah. have a straw. Just, <laughs> yeah. just take off the helmet, get one good breath in. <gasps> <laughs> and wait, what a way to go. <laughs> so Where this is, is um, another little random thing. There's a Saturn on steroids planet called J1407b. Hmm. Saturn itself is a beautiful planet renowned for its elegant rings. If you like Saturn, you will definitely enjoy a nice field trip to this planet. This exoplanet is basically what would happen if you were to ask a child to create their version of Saturn. You know, kids like exaggerate mm, yeah, everything. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, like draw a picture of yourself and they're like yeah. taller than a house. Yeah, yeah this yeah. one's packing some heat. <laughs> yeah, so this exoplanet's rings expand 200 times wider than the planet Saturn's rings in our solar system. So just to give you an idea of what that means, to put it into perspective, if this planet were to take the place of our Saturn, the rings of the planet would appear in our night sky. Oh, oh wow, that'd be beautiful. Yeah, and they would cool. be way, yeah, way bigger than the moon. So it sounds very awesome. There is a 
semi picture to give you an idea of what it looks like. And I'll put that on the pole. Oh, yeah. Looks like a like a black hole. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a spiral it, spiraling galaxy. Yeah. So imagine like looking into the sky and seeing the rings. Yeah, of that'd Saturn. be beautiful. Yeah. Kind of upset that we can't see. I know. That. Now yeah. I'm disappointed. Like, why take that away from yeah. us? Yeah. Why can't we have? Maybe like that one was built. And he's like, ah, oh, too big. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just so, <laughs> throws it out in space. I'm gonna yeah. throw this out there too because. Um, I know we need to wrap it up, but this was pretty cool. And I think Chase will appreciate this because will. you will. Mm. So, you know, there are a lot of theories out there that the moon experience is fake. Mm, mm. There are theories. And listen, sometimes I get mad at conspiracy theories because I feel like it's just a bunch of idiots spreading harmful information, right? But there mm. are certain things that I'm like, you know, I'm not saying you're right or wrong. I don't know. I'm very open minded with certain things. But here's something I did not know about the moon. <clears throat> when. They went to the moon. And a lot of people say, oh, it's not real that they didn't go. But an American flag wasn't the only thing astronauts left behind on the moon 50 years ago. One of the experiments taken into Apollo 11 was called the Lunar Laser Retro Reflector. And it still works today, even though it wasn't supposed to. It was supposed to last about 10 years, but technically it still works today. Mm. <clears throat> and there's actually a Big Bang Theory episode, speaking of pop culture, mm. that um, references this. Now, the TV show is like exaggerated. Like they did not have the equipment that you would actually need right. to do it. But the thing does exist. <clears throat> the idea behind it was we needed to accurately measure the distance between the Earth and the moon, see if that distance varies, and map out its orbit. So when Buzz Aldrin left the moon lander, he laid out the reflector module on the surface that enabled scientists here on Earth to shoot a laser at the moon and have the light reflected back at them. A laser beam. So there's a bunch of mirrors on the moon. And then what they do is they measure it. it. It comes back. I take the round trip time, divide that, blah, 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 blah. There's the whole thing. But what's crazy about it is I never knew this. I didn't know that they left this yeah, fucking never heard mirror. Of that. Yeah. But what else is crazy is that <clears throat> um, it's actually what we credit currently to our current GPS system is because of this. Oh, interesting. So um, that's why I'm reading this shit. And I'm like, I feel stupid. I'm like, how did I not know? I mean, honestly, of all the moon <laughs> shit I've ever read, there's never been mention of a yeah. little mirror is it a Mandela effect thing where they're just like not, not just now telling us or like it, I don't know I don't know I don't remember ever hearing that I don't know maybe oh this is cool too though but the process of like doing it it's not as simple as like somebody literally going outside and being like here's a laser where's the moon to reflect it it is such a complex uh, situation that with as much light as you send out and getting just that single photon back <laughs> it would be like going to a beach that's say a thousand kilometers long which how many miles is that a lot okay a lot of miles <laughs> um and 30 to 40 kilometers deep and 30 kilometers wide. And then you, someone tells you exactly what grain of sand to pick out of that pot. Oh, my God. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's very complex, and they need, like, extremely powerful equipment to do it. But, yeah, I had never heard that they left fucking mirrors on the moon. That's not yeah. good and the fact that Great it, for the aliens. It affected They're um, like, oh, God, look at that ass. <laughs> oh I'm looking God. fine as fuck today. <laughs> 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 yeah. I'm just now Shit. understanding what happened. What you're saying? Um, I'm scrolling through to see. He if feels like a little twin. She's like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> they, were, they were shooting a laser. <laughs> oh shit! What was that? <laughs> Felt like a little focus. <laughs> yeah, that laser. Didn't come <laughs> <laughs> what was that? Jesus Christ! Oh my god! <laughs> the aliens know Jesus Christ. <laughs> Jesus yeah, they Christ. do. He's What's all. That? Jesus is an alien. There, I said it. I bet. I bet He's aliens wear Jesus sky. tees. I mean, come on. Jesus tees. Yeah, those big old bug eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Do not get me started on how the Bible supports alien Don't life. Don't even get me Save started. that for another show. I'm just show. saying, uh, angels, aliens, these creatures that are Angelians. human. Angelians. They the sky. They have advanced knowledge. Flaming chariots that, that were spinning like with saucers. With humans and create offspring. I'm, listen. Cherubs. Okay, anyway. There was one <laughs> other. <Cherub. laughs> there was one other thing I wanted to talk about, but the truth is, I can't handle it. I okay. I try to wrap my brain around it when it comes to like space and time and time travel and all that shit. It fascinates me, but like I cannot comprehend. Is it, it the enough. dinosaur light thing? What's the dinosaur light? Basically, oh. there's Damn a theory it. that if you were say however long it's been since the dinosaurs ruled the earth mm -hmm. if you were to travel that many light years away from earth and somehow be able to see earth from that far away with a telescope mm -hmm. you could see dinosaurs I fucking Man, interesting <laughs> oh, adam you win because that's how that's how light travels <laughs> and Keep that's the belt, the theory. Adam. it's super neat <laughs> i kept watching these videos or like the the easiest way to understand uh 
Einstein's theory of relative blah, 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 blah. And I was like, okay, this is the dumb version. I can do this. And I would be like drooling and like, I don't, I don't. My brain is trying so I? hard. I'm trying and I'm like, I get it for like a moment. And then I'm like, no, I can't handle this. And then like shut down. Yeah. But yeah. Space is scary. It is scary, scary but fascinating. Space. And when people say time is a made up construct, I'm like, it's true though. When you like, I mean, like it, we're all fucking, it's all. It's just chaos. <laughs> <laughs> Think about that when you go to sleep. All right. Therapy, anybody? Yeah. Yes. So uh, mm. remember, Adam, <laughs> uh, I have nothing left. Okay. Neat. Jen, do you that, have anything I left? I think that wraps it up. I don't want to talk about the time thing. I can't handle it. Okay. We don't have to then. <laughs> okay. It's not spiral. Gotcha. <laughs> is there any, that was good. Is there any other segments that we're going into or not? You know, I've been doing the one where I pull comments and stuff from our um, followers, but there were two times in a row where... I didn't get to be here at the end because the two-year-old woke up. So right. honestly, yeah. I'm just thrown off. We got some lucky comments. That's fair. <laughs> we did. Yeah. We got um, some stories. We did a podcast last week, I think. The people, the luckiest, or no. Yeah, it's out one, this week. Yeah, it's out right now. The luckiest um, people in existence, which was a super fun episode. And we asked some of our followers, what's the luckiest thing that ever happened to you? So I do remember some of those. <clears throat> one, um, it's actually a friend of mine. She said that she, one of the luckiest things that ever happened to her was she was driving and got a flat tire. And the flat tire kept her from getting to this gas station she was aiming for. And that gas station blew up. Yeah. So, fuck. Right? <laughs> Which sounds like a chance. movie. Yeah, honestly. Right? Um, we had several people who had cool stories about how they, like, you know, won concert tickets or $1,000 at a, a gas station or, you know, like, yeah. fun stuff like that. We had somebody who won on Family Feud. So that was oh, yeah, that's pretty, pretty cool. cool. That's cool as shit. Yeah. Um, and then there were some really sweet stories, you know, like people who um, the luckiest thing they had, um, like a rainbow baby, which is when you lost a baby and then you get to have one after they call that a rainbow baby. So those are cool. And there was one story of um, a woman who's like, there's several stories like this where like a woman gave birth um, to a baby who they found out the umbilical cord was wrapped around its neck twice, which is super dangerous, mm -hmm. but the cord happened to be like excessively long. And so it didn't choke the yeah. baby up. And like yeah. the cord was stretchy. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's like, you know, um, and also I don't, I feel bad doing this, but I don't want to give spoilers, but I just finished the Trevor Noah book oh, that yeah. we were talking about. And so his, um, his mom has some stories too about like like literally being shot in the face and four times in a row the gun not going off. Jesus wow. You know, Christ. like yeah. So I've mentioned that book several times. I highly recommend it. Yeah. Um Sounds what, good. yeah. So anyway, yeah. cool. Cool, cool, cool. All right, Let's ladies and gentlemen. Show. Yeah? Were you gonna say words? No. Okay. I was admiring Jen's Nasha shirt. <laughs> Nasha? <laughs> Nasha. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I guess I have to declare a winner at this point. Yes. Oh, it's Ladies and gentlemen. Oh, he ripped. I'm sweating. He just, da, 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 he just whipped it out. Oh, it's so beautiful. Look Time to declare a winner. Should it? You have seen. You yeah. Have seen. Underwater fighting championship. <laughs> Who's the winner? <laughs> it's Jennifer. Oh, <laughs> finally. I've won so many times, but I couldn't do it on the day there was a fucking belt. The nope. truth is, I told Adam I was going to quit. <laughs> <laughs> show off that strap. Let's I was like, see if it. you're going to make me be on camera and I don't win, I fucking quit the show. <laughs> <laughs> so even though I won this because it's, what's the opposite of bribe? A threat? Uh, uh, exploitation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, threat. Okay. Yeah, Chase has won the last bribe. three weeks. You actually should have brought it with you. Yeah, but. I don't think he won last three. I think he won last two. Three. I think it's been three or four <laughs> or five. I know who's three. counting. Not uh, me. Me. <laughs> Jen, nice, uh, nice work today. <laughs> so alcohol, space, what water. Yeah. I'm never. We're supposed to wear it around your, um, your legs. Your legs. Okay. Yeah, you're supposed awesome. to wear it around your head like that, like a bonnet. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. So I have the championship belt. Nice. Yeah. Pretty excited about that. Um, if you that. enjoy, at least tolerate the show. Feel free to subscribe and leave us a five star. Review. Reviews are important yeah. because they help other <laughs> listeners to discover us. Um, we are just now putting video content out into the universe. This, yeah, this is the first one. So if you're watching us on YouTube, um, check us out, subscribe, but also tell your friends. Also, follow us on TikTok, Instagram, Salty Mermaid, E-N-T, and check out the blog at SaltyMermaidEntertainment.com slash for the coolest shit ever in space. That's, what <laughs> That's not real. Don't go there. <laughs> Don't go there. 
Cool. We don't know. How, oh, that's we haven't figured out how to end our show yet. Oh yeah, there's that, and also we're on video now, so it's even more the worst. I kept forgetting, and so what would happen would it be like normal, normal? They'd be like, "Oh fuck, I'm on camera." They'd be like, trying to act nonchalant. <laughs> sweating. Yeah, it's okay. Hey, thank you so much for listening. We appreciate everybody. Do all the fun stuff. Remember, very important. Go look at the freaking blog if you're not watching this on video. Um, because it's definitely a blog worthy. You want to see the pictures. Super cool and awesome and amazing. And I hope that your week is full of awesome sh- stuff. Adam, give him some words of encouragement. Tell him. You know um, how there are people in the world um, that that's there's a lot of them out there. Mm-hmm. And, you know, a lot of them need some encouragement nowadays. And <laughs> mm. all I have to say about that. Preach, brother. Is, preach. You don't have a belt. You suck. <laughs> <laughs> and that's I it. do. <laughs> Thank you for listening. <laughs> <laughs>